What is up guys, fourth year medical student here and today we're gonna learn about aneurysms. Let's get to it. Aneurysms are essentially balloon-like dilatations in blood vessels and we can see one right here. Oh, well, the vessel's a little bit bigger than normal. What's so bad about that, right? I mean, who cares? Well, it's bad for a couple reasons. First of all, aneurysms disrupt the normal architecture and structure of the vessel. These bigger balloon-like dilatations in vessels are more prone to rupturing. And of course, if a big vessel ruptures or breaks open, that's a very bad thing because then all the blood will leak out and it will cause lots of bleeding. Another bad thing that happens is as aneurysms grow, they can compress and impinge on surrounding structures. For instance, one common set of aneurysms is the abdominal aorta right here. Note in close proximity to the abdominal aorta, we have the ureters. The ureters connect the kidneys to the bladder. In other words, urine that's made by the kidneys will drain into the, into the bladder through the ureters. The ureters are like a pipe connecting the two. Now you can imagine that if this aorta kind of blows up and balloons outward, it can lead to compression of the nearby ureter. This can be a problem because then urine won't be able to flow into the bladder. Instead, there'll be a backup, a congestion, kind of like a traffic jam. And ultimately this backup will back up into the kidney and it can cause kidney damage. Your aorta is also located right in front of your vertebral spine, and if there's an aneurysm, this aneurysm can balloon outward and compress your vertebral bodies and ultimately damage your vertebra. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, you know, bones are so hard and vessels are so soft. How can a vessel damage a bone? And to be honest, I don't really know. I mean, I guess the aorta is a really strong vessel, so it's strong enough to damage a bone, I guess. Now the million dollar question, what causes aneurysms? Well, there's two main things. There's one, atherosclerosis, and two, hypertension. Now, atherosclerosis is cool because, like, the meaning is in the word. So, athero is apparently Greek for gruel, and sclerosis is, like, Greek for hardening, I think. So, if anyone in the comments is Greek, please, like, confirm that for me if you can. So, atherosclerosis is hardening and narrowing of the arteries due to the buildup of this gruel-like substance, and we call this substance plaque. We see a nice picture of this plaque right here. As you can see, this is the plaque on either side of the artery, and what it's doing is it's narrowing the caliber or the diameter of the artery. This is bad because it impairs blood flow from getting to the place that this artery is supposed to supply. But how does this cause aneurysms? Time for the whiteboard. One sec. <laughs> oh, this is nice. So this right here is our blood vessel, and you know, there's this is these are like blood cells that I tried to draw, and they're like flying through the artery like they should be. And on either side of the artery, we see the buildup of this plaque that's kind of like narrowing the vessel lumen, right? And I know you're getting impatient. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So remember, in big vessels like these, they have nice thick walls, right? And these thick walls need their own supply of nutrients. So what happens is part of the way that these, these vessels get their nutrients is by diffusion of nutrients from the bloodstream, kind of like throughout the uh, walls of the blood vessel. And we can see that if we have this buildup of this thick plaque right here, it acts as a barrier to nutrients being able to kind of travel through the walls of the artery and diffuse. This causes weakening of the wall, which can then predispose it to ballooning outwards in responses to high pressures, and that can cause an aneurysm. Alternatively, vessels also have what's called a viscera visorum, and this is where things can get kind of nuts. So in other words, the viscera visorum is when you have very thick-walled uh, blood vessels like our aorta, which require like, you know, obviously the walls require their own source of nutrients, right? So it's when you have literally blood vessels that are coming off of the main blood vessel just to supply the blood vessel wall. In other words, it's blood vessels that supply blood vessels. Pretty nuts, Vasa visorum. In response to high blood pressure, these tiny fragile vessels can actually undergo a process called arteriolosclerosis. Arteriolosclerosis is when vessels go from normal to becoming narrower and more fragile in response to hypertension. This typically only occurs in smaller vessels, like vessels of the vasa visorum. If these vessels are affected, it leads to a decrease of the functional blood supply to the vessel wall. This again will cause weakening of the wall of the vessel. Taken together, hypertension and atherosclerosis are two of the most common causes of weakening of vessel walls, which can lead to the formation of aneurysms. Aneurysms can be prevented by doing things that decrease your hypertension and atherosclerosis. Things like regular exercise, eating diets that are low in salt and high in things like fruits, vegetables, and fibers. Eliminating smoking, alcohol intake, as well as getting to a healthy weight will also help. This video is for educational purposes only, and please seek all medical advice from your healthcare provider, who knows you best. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.